It's the only show that hits every corner of Maine's hardwood hoop landscape, high school, college, and professional. Join us Friday night during basketball. This is ABC 7 News at Noon. The man charged with killing four people in Bowdoin has withdrawn his original plea. Plus, U.S. officials discuss the ongoing crisis at the Mexican border, and we'll take a look at some of the biggest stories from earlier this year. Thank you for joining us. I'm Devin Dagnold. But first, let's take a look at our uh, weather forecast with meteorologist Devin Biggs. Alrighty, happy Wednesday afternoon, and we've had fog earlier this morning. You know, this is what it looked like at one point, though, reducing visibilities in many areas. We're going to hold on to some of that fog as the day progresses on, so keep that in mind as you do travel. It might be a little bit dreary out there moving forward. We've also had some rain developing out there as well earlier today, and those rain showers are starting to taper off for now, though, but we will be watching for more opportunities coming up soon. It looks like we've had a little bit of snow up in the northern parts of the state as well. Let's zoom things out and give you the bigger picture, though. Again, nothing too extreme, but we are going to be watching for more rain showers that will be developing over the next several days and maybe mixing in with a little bit of snow as well. But here's more rain chances coming up later today in the parts of tonight. Notice we do catch a break, though, as we head towards later on tonight in the parts of Thursday morning. Forecast for today, we'll call it mostly cloudy rain showers and fog on the way with highs in the lower 40s and the wind overall looking nice and calm. Overnight tonight, lower 30s, mostly cloudy, some rain showers on the way, and that northeast breeze getting up to about 5 miles per hour. As we move ahead towards tomorrow, up for 30s, mostly cloudy, some more rain showers are possible. And that northeast breeze getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. That hourly forecast for the rest of the afternoon period. The rain showers continue. Temperatures in the 30s and 40s. Your full five-day forecast is coming up. Thank you, Devin. A man charged with killing four people in Bowdoin and then opening fire on motorists has withdrawn his insanity plea. 34-year-old Joseph Eaton was uh, claimed he was not criminally responsible when he murdered his parents and two others in April. He told reporters he suffered a psychotic break and was under the influence of drugs when he opened fire at his parents' home. He later fired shots at motorists on Interstate 295, wounding two other people. According to the Morning Sentinel, Eaton is maintaining his not guilty plea, but there's no word on why he's dropping his insanity defense. He has been indicted on multiple charges, including murder. In other news, it's no secret that Maine is facing an affordable housing crisis. But according to a new report, the housing affordability gap is bigger than previously thought. Our Augusta reporter, Corey Bouchard, has more on what this report means and how it will help shape the future solutions to this issue. It's been a long time uh, since Maine has really done a deep dive on the actual need of housing units. Dan Brennan is the director of the Maine State Housing Authority. He's talking about a recently released report commissioned by the legislature to get a pulse on the total spectrum of housing in Maine, not just for those with lower income levels. Uh, we wanted a broader look of how many homes in general at all income levels does Maine need. And so what this report does is it tells us that we're across all income spectrums about 38,000 units short. That 38,000 reflects the current housing shortages. And according to Brennan, that number is only expected to climb in the next few years. And when we look ahead to 2030, we're going to need another 35 or 40. We're talking 75 to 80,000 units between now and 2030. And Brennan says the report is not just talking about one or two bedroom apartments. We have more and more families coming into Maine with larger families, three bedroom, four bedroom, five, six bedroom apartments. So we need all sorts of housing on the rental side. On the single family side, we definitely need more starter homes built. Brennan adds, if something isn't done to fill the gap, the results will be drastic and we're already starting to feel the effects now. Well, I think we're experiencing it right now. We don't have enough homes right now for the people that live in Maine. Therefore, rents are going up, costs of housing are going up, and it's putting more and more stress on people living in Maine. To read the full report, you can visit our website. In Augusta, I'm Corey Bouchard with ABC7 and Fox 22 News. According to the Bicycle Coalition of Maine, 19 pedestrians and one cyclist have died this year. And as Mal Meyer reports, there are little things everyone can do to make the roads safer for everyone. This is particularly tragic. Rosemary DeAngelis is a chair for South Portland's Bicycle Pedestrian Advisory Committee. They're planning to look at the crash that killed 71-year-old Paula McAuliffe Sunday evening. 
so we look at all components of an accident you know what was the time of day what was the lighting was there driver distractibility were they on a crosswalk in the past the city has been reactive to high crash spots like finding ways to reconfigure traffic lights improve the roadway and more we've strategically placed our crossing guards throughout the city in the busiest areas um, in in the way we determine these areas is just look at the data. Data doesn't lie. It's been um, a pretty steady, um, uh, pretty steady level of fatalities around the state. Jean Sedaris is the executive director for the Bicycle Coalition of Maine. She says these crashes have happened throughout the day, not just at night, and under a variety of causes. One thing that makes this this challenging is there isn't a single reason or a single. Um, factor that we uh, can really attribute to this. That's why she says safety needs to be on everyone's mind. For people who are biking and walking, you know, do your best to be visible, um, to, you know, cross in places that are that are safe and, and well marked. You know, don't be looking at your phone or something, even if you're walking. Just because you're walking, it doesn't mean that the motorists are going to see you. Drivers are encouraged to slow down, be careful navigating difficult intersections, and be aware they're not the only ones out on the road. A lot of accidents are unavoidable, but a lot are. In other news, an agreement has been reached between the Maine Service Employees Association Local 1989 Union and the Mills Administration after several months of negotiations over labor, labor contracts. Excuse me. Our Grace Blanchard has the details. The MSCA, which represents state employees from a number of different executive branch agencies, have voted to ratify four successor labor agreements with the state of Maine, which will impact over 9,000 employees. This comes after more than six months of negotiation efforts. Members of the Maine Service Employees Association have been rallying in Augusta for months, urging the state to close the pay gap. Back in November, the union's president, Mark Brunton, and hundreds of his fellow union members rallied at the state house, demanding to have their voices heard by the governor. Negotiating since late in April of 2023, and for a long time, uh, the negotiators on the uh, state side have not acknowledged that there is a pay gap. The ratified contracts will provide an across-the-board pay raise of 6%, which will take effect following the new year. Along with the pay increases, workers can also expect to see an increase in vacation time, paid parental leave, and child care reimbursement. According to a news release from the Maine Department of Administrative and Financial Services, the $99 million set aside to negotiate with during the collective bargaining process is the largest amount ever proposed for bargaining. The commissioner said in a statement, we applaud MSCA members' ratification of these new contracts, which demonstrates our commitment to providing competitive wages and benefits for state and Maine employees. We are now on track to increase wages by at least 23 percent since taking office, while significantly improving benefits. Nobody from the union was available, as there is still more work to be done before these contracts go into effect. However, representatives from the state say they are happy to be moving in a positive direction. In studio, I'm Grace Blanchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Well, speaking of wages, Maine's lowest paid employees are about to make more money. The state's minimum wage increase is set to go into effect on January 1st. The pay increase will go from $13.80 up to $14.15. According to the Maine Center for Economic Policy, 60 8,000 Mainers are making at or below the new state minimum. The new statewide increase will also impact tipped workers, bringing their base pay to $7.08 an hour. Employers will also have to show those employees are making at least minimum wage when combined with their tips. Well, coming up on ABC7 News at Noon, we'll take a look at some of this year's most impactful stories. Don't go anywhere. Inez, let me ask you, you're using head and shoulders, right? Only when I see flakes. Then I switch back to my regular shampoo. You should use it every wash, otherwise the flakes will come back. He's right, you know. Is that Tiny Troy? The ingredients in head and shoulders keep the microbes that cause flakes that big. Microbes? Really? They're always on your scalp. Little rascals. But good news, there's no itchiness, dryness, or flakes down here. I love Tiny Troy and his tiny, gorgeous hair. He's the best. Make every wash count. Little help, please? 
Did you know that it's possible to buy the wrong type of flooring for your home? Whether you're a do-it-yourselfer or a professional contractor, the experts at Don DeKal Mainwood Floors are here to help, offering solid pro advice from choosing the right material and color to installation. Don DeKal features the highest quality hardwood flooring sourced from lumber right here in Maine, from Maine traditions. Not only will you get a floor you'll love, you'll get a floor that will last. Don DeKal Mainwood Floors, buy from the best, forget the rest. With AAA insurance, by bundling our home and auto policies, we saved over $450. And we were shocked at the savings. When we switched to AAA auto insurance and bundled our policies, we were able to save over $400 every year. Switch to AAA insurance today, and you could save an average of $483 on auto insurance. Compare that to State Farm, GEICO, even Allstate. Call now for your free AAA full picture quote to find out how much you could save. Well, my passion is hang gliding. I've been doing it for over 30 years, and it's like flying. I mean, it's like everything you always dreamed about. AAA insurance helps us save more. And do more. The savings from AAA insurance has allowed me to pursue my passion of making jewelry. It's great to have a little bit of extra cash to do something that you love. To find out how much you could save by switching to AAA Insurance, call 866-460-1310 for your free AAA full picture quote today. You'll be glad you did. Your favorite restaurants were half off. It's Half Off Dining from Fox 22 and ABC7. Go to foxbangor.com, click on Half Off Dining, and start saving now. Escape to tranquility at the Mill Cafe in Dover Foxcroft, where every sip comes with a view. Enjoy fresh brews and delectable bites right on the water's edge. Your oasis awaits. Great restaurants from all over Eastern Maine at Half Off Dining from Fox 22 and ABC7. You're watching ABC7 Bangor. To celebrate the end of the year, we now kick off our annual Year in Review series. Our Doug Banks leads things off. We are taking a look back on the stories and events that impacted our area in 2023. Today, I'll be sharing with you a few of those stories that helped shape January and February. Whether it was the path less traveled, persevering down Main Street, or looking for new pathways down I-395. Mainers began 2023 looking towards a brighter future. I'm excited to spend some of it with my best friend. <laughs> We're graduating. We're graduating. We're excited to welcome our new baby, hoping to probably leave Maine. In Augusta, the first two months of 2023 saw the beginnings of Maine's biennial budget and the steps toward expanding abortion rights, specifically a proposal for expansions that would prevent local municipalities from restricting access. The decision to have an abortion is deeply personal. After a mistrial last year, the murder trial of Gardner man Dylan Ketchum began in January. Ketchum was charged with murder, attempted murder, and aggravated assault. He was later sentenced to 65 years. A young man he thought of as a brother would soon be on top of him with that machete. Moving to the world of sports gambling, the main gambling control unit began unveiling plans that would eventually make way to what we have today. Once that day came, Maine tribal communities rejoiced. The tribes have really been trying to regain um, the ability to, to gamble. Game. In February, family and friends gathered as 3rd Battalion 142nd Aviation Regiment deployed to provide air support for Operation Inherent Resolve. This was the first time an aviation regiment was deployed from Maine since 2018. Life flight pilot Abel Gleason spoke to the difficulty that comes saying goodbye to family. There's a stereotype about military guys not being that forthcoming with their feelings. Even if you come from a military family I th and they know what to expect, I think that's always a gut punch to have to, to confront that. Winter in Maine can stop anyone in their tracks. But no amount of snow could hold back late police chief Chris Greeley in the Holden Police Department as they brought community members heating oil free of charge. While we have hard things and bad things we have to sometimes deal with, it's nice to be able to do something nice like this. February came to a close with a story about a dog who wandered off in the middle of the night and a homeowner who feared the worst. I kept saying, Gabby, where are you? Where could you be? Found by a Sagadahawk County Sheriff deputy, shivering and hungry, Gabby was eventually brought home. I don't know what I had done if something will happen to her, you know? The first few weeks of any new year helps put life into perspective. It gives us a chance to try something bold, from polar plunges into an icy lake, to Devin Dagnall 
trying to rock facial hair. As the year moved forward, all that matters is you did too. Throughout the week, each reporter here will be bringing you more stories from 2023, with Grace Blanchard showing us what happened in March and April. In studio, I'm Doug Banks for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Gee, thanks, Douglas. After the break, we'll take a look at the ongoing crisis at the U.S.-Mexico border. Stick with us. Because I have both Medicaid and Medicare, I got a special Medicare Advantage plan from WellCare. It's called DSNP. That's D-S-N-P. And it stands for Dual Eligible Special Needs Plan. Ah, uh, my grandson. It's my boy. Hey, Grandma. And a WellCare DSNP comes with a whole lot of these. As in WellCare gives me benefits I can use every day. And real human support. And answers I can understand. And I get benefits like $0 copays on prescriptions and a WellCare Spendables debit card to pay for things like dental, utilities, and groceries. I can even use it to pay at the pump for gas. And that means a WellCare DSNP provides what I need when I need it. And that gives me the confidence I need to get through every day. The coverage you need and more. Call or visit wellcareyes.com to see if you qualify for more benefits. Football fans, with the Caesars Sportsbook app, you can be in the game all the time. Seeking instant action? Quick Picks offers you the most popular games and markets already built for you and ready to bet. Experience the thrill when you stack your bets to create a super parlay. Build bets for your favorite teams and players across multiple games. This season, don't just watch the game. Download Caesars Sportsbook and experience the game like never before. Quitting smoking, vaping, and other tobacco may be tough, but you can do it. Even if you don't get it right the first time, don't give up. Working with a quit coach increases your chances of successfully quitting, especially combined with quit medications. That's why each quit program through the main quit link offers free patches, gum, and or lozenges and helps you build a customized quit plan. Call 1-800-QUIT-NOW or enroll online at mainquitlink.com. It's free and it works. Happy Holidays from Colbury Enterprises. We wish peace and joy this holiday season for all and a happy new year. ADA Fence would like to thank all past and present customers for their patronage. Have a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Happy Holidays from Caring Companions and Home Care. Call for help with your daily personal care. Employment opportunities available. Hundreds of migrants are spending the holiday week waiting for processing at the U.S. border. Top U.S. officials are expected to travel to Mexico this week for talks on the ongoing crisis. Fox News national correspondent William Lalgenes reports. The largest caravan this year, some 8,000, set off Friday from southern Mexico to the U.S. border, a self-described exodus from poverty. The President of the United States must help us, as we are migrants. Migrants come not just from Mexico, El Salvador, Honduras, Guatemala, but in the last fiscal year. More than half arrived from across the globe, including 7,000 Russians and 35,000 Chinese. He could stop this crisis tomorrow if he wanted to. Over the Christmas holidays, agents encountered more than 35,000 migrants. Over the last three months, that number topped 730,000, a city the size of Denver. How do you stop it? You actually enforce the law. The law clearly states in the statute, and when someone enters illegally without proper documentation, they shall be detained. But the Biden administration doesn't see it that way. Look, we should all recognize that as long as America is the land of freedom and opportunity, people are going to try to come here. Today, most migrants receive humanitarian parole, along with a blanket, food, and a bus ticket to the city of their choice. Tomorrow, a high-level U.S. delegation heads to Mexico City, looking for concessions following a phone call last week between Presidents Biden and Manuel Lopez Obrador. They did talk in broad terms about 
uh, what can be done inside Mexico to slow that process down. Um, and there are some things like uh, checkpoints on rail lines and on, on highways and that kind of thing. Caravans provide a focal point for the media, but the fact is Mexico is a nonstop highway of migrants. While Secretaries Blinken and Mayorkas expect Mexico to apply the stick, they continue to offer carrots. In Los Angeles, William Lajeunesse, Fox News. An airstrike by Ukraine on Crimea damages a Russian warship. Video seen here showing huge flames rising into the sky from the airstrike. Russia's defense ministry saying Tuesday that one of their landing ships was hit by plane-launched guided missiles at a base in Crimea. At least one person was killed in the attack. Two Ukrainian fighter jets were said to be destroyed by anti-aircraft fire during the assault. A Ukrainian Air Force spokesperson is denying that claim that Ukrainian planes were shot down during the attack. In other news, the fighting continues in Gaza as Israeli forces strike on the ground and from the air. This, as calls for a ceasefire, are shot down by Prime Minister Netanyahu. Fox News correspondent Trey Yingst has the latest. We are not stopping. Whoever talks about stopping, there is no such thing. In an apparent expansion of their ground offensive, Israeli forces bombarded Palestinian refugee camps in central Gaza Tuesday. This coming after airstrikes over the weekend left hundreds dead, according to the Hamas-run Palestinian Health Ministry. Palestinians are being driven into smaller areas of the Strip after weeks of heavy ground fighting in northern Gaza and the southern city of Khan Yunus. Israeli troops engaged in this intense fighting, going block by block on the ground, saying they've lost 19 soldiers over the last several days, with several more injured. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says his country's fight is not close to being finished as they look to go after Hamas leadership. We are doing everything to safeguard the lives of our warriors, but one thing we will not do, we will not stop until we achieve victory. Meanwhile, a new proposal from Egypt has been rejected by Hamas. The plan would trade a ceasefire for a phased hostage release. Palestinian factions, though, are unwilling to consider a new proposal that sees new leadership in Gaza, while the Israelis have been clear that Hamas will not control Gaza once the war is over. The war will continue until the end, until we finish them, no less. A top advisor to the Israeli prime minister will be in Washington today to discuss the next steps in the war in Gaza. In Tel Aviv, Trey Yingst, Fox News. When we return, Devin Biggs has your five-day forecast. Don't go anywhere. Whatever the holidays mean to you, get the most out of them in a new Honda. Whether it's dropping off presents in a sporty Civic or picking up a few for yourself in a fun to drive HRV. Your holiday adventure awaits with a new Honda during Happy Honda Days. Buy online, reserve from select dealers, or visit your local Honda dealer today. Feeling sluggish or weighed down could be a sign that your digestive system isn't at its best. But a little Metamucil every day can help. Metamucil psyllium fiber gels to trap and remove the waste that weighs you down and also helps lower cholesterol and slows sugar absorption to promote healthy blood sugar levels. So you can feel lighter and more energetic. Lighten every day the Metamucil way. And for a delicious way to promote digestive health, try Metamucil Fiber Thins. Healing Hands Massage in Hamden provides professional massage services tailored specifically for our clients. Healing Hands Massage offers a variety of different massage techniques and services. Healing Hands Massage also offers spa services such as facials, body scrubs, and paraffin wax for the hands and feet. Are you looking for a day of relaxation? Healing Hands Massage offers outstanding packages at reasonable rates. Whether you're looking for relief from chronic pain, stiffness, or just want to treat yourself to a day of relaxation, Healing Hands Massage is the place for you. Remember the one who was sent to you this day. Merry Christmas from Ideal Recycling. Season's greetings from Saliba's Rug Cleaners, specializing in rug cleaning and repair for more than 60 years. New England Bible College and Seminary wishes you the blessings of the love and light found in Jesus this Christmas.
welcome back. Ads are making their way to Amazon Prime Video very soon. The company says it will roll out limited ads on movies and TV shows starting January 29th. But if you want to watch your entertainment ad free, you can pay an extra $2.99 per month on top of your subscription. Amazon says it plans to have fewer ads than what's on TV. Looking to really spice up your New Year's Eve? You may want to head to one of these locations. Wallet Hub releasing their list of top 10 places to celebrate New Year's Eve this year. On the top of the list, sunny Orlando, Florida, followed by San, San Diego, New York City, Las Vegas, and Atlanta, Georgia. To round out the top five, Miami, LA, Chicago, Denver, and Washington, D.C. are also listed in the top 10. Wallet Hub says they made their choices based on entertainment, food safety costs, and accessibility. It may not be too late to plan your trip to one of these locations before the clock winds down on 2023, Sunday at midnight. Now, here's your full forecast with Devin Biggs. Today's full weather forecast is brought to you by Healing Hands Massage in Hamden, providing professional massage services tailored specifically for their clients. Stop by Healing Hands Massage today. You'll thank yourself later. All right, here are the advisories we had earlier this morning. These have both since been dropped for the time being, though. This was it was a dense fog advisory and also a flood advisory. The dense fog advisory, because of this, so we had fog that developed pretty thick in some spots, so earlier this morning, and we're still going to be watching for fog as we do move forward this afternoon so be ready for that might be hard to see at times but we've also had some rain developing as well being indicated there by the radar and satellite we're going to be watching for that as the daytime period progresses on especially as we're going to be watching for more activity here it is right about in here though we're going to be watching for rain tracking from the west going toward the east very slowly we'll have multiple days and opportunities for rain showers that will be moving in maybe multiple precipitation types as well we're at around two feet according to the wave heights and the buoys for the time being though so we're looking okay there things looking rather calm no advice and effect along the coastline but we are watching though for rain that's developing out there too we'll keep that going today with some breaks as well we'll have a break developing later on tonight and parts of tomorrow morning but rain chances are back by thursday afternoon in the evening time frame possibly switching over to a wintry mix by friday morning that could possibly lead to some slippery roadways in some spots so be ready for that eventually a switch over to snow as possible and some snow accumulations could occur across the, the northern parts of the state too later on friday and especially friday night and the parts of saturday so we may need to watch this as this aerial pressure rotates through there's some uncertainty with this right now too so we could ex we could see this change as we move forward in time which is why with the snowfall map i'm not showing you any numbers because things could change in a big hurry though but the big takeaway here is anywhere you see the darker color there's a good probability for some decent snow accumulations there while further down to the south though the lighter colors not as much snow accumulations expected we'll keep an eye on this as we do move closer in time but we could see some rainfall as well between now and at least saturday some spots will see up to one to two inches of rain before we're all finished up. So plenty of things to keep an eye on moving forward in time. Average high temperature is 31 degrees, lower 40s today, upper 30s as we head towards Thursday. We're back in the middle 30s though by Friday, upper 30s again Saturday into Sunday, and lower 30s again Monday and also in year Tuesday. For today, lower 40s, mostly cloudy, some rain, some rain showers and fog on the way with the wind overall looking nice and calm. Overnight tonight, lower 30s, mostly cloudy, rain showers again. Northeast wind at about 